Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Crypto winter may be coming to an end. It looks like the SEC has approved iShares BlackRock Bitcoin ETF. We've got that. Ripple XRP and Stellar XLM, the chosen ones. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. It's linked to, ladies and gentlemen, your access to private investment, the best private equity in the world. Click the link below to my sponsor and get started. I tell you, 352,000 plus registered users getting ready to cross 300 million in total investments. Don't mess around and take advantage of the link below. This stuff does not last long. I tell you that. Now, let's look at the numbers very quickly here. $1.16 trillion market cap for crypto. So the market is up six and a half percent. Bitcoin twenty eight thousand five hundred plus. Ethereum fifteen ninety five and change right now. Tether is ninety eight cents. Peg is slipping a little bit right there, but we're at eighty five point eight billion plus. If that's not a new all time high, we're so close to it. What's left won't live. XRP is forty nine cents. It's up two point one percent, but you can see. 5.8, 2.3 of that in the last hour for Bitcoin. We'll get to that news in just a second here. Just in, Tether freezes 32 addresses containing $873 million that were found to be linked to terrorism and warfare in Israel and Ukraine. We'll give you more on that as we get it. And then this just came through moments ago here. This is BlackRock. SEC approves BlackRock Spot Bitcoin ETF through iShares. Now, we're still waiting for the SEC to make that announcement, so we do need to get confirmation, but the market is responding, so it does appear that it is accurate, up 6.3, obviously 5.8 here, half of that, uh, or a little less than half of that in just the last few moments here, so we will get that to you as soon as we can get even more confirmation. But I wanted to bring you to this video right here. This is a gentleman looking at somebody's portfolio here, and then he's going to comment on XRP. Let's take a listen very quickly here. So, uh, I'm my portfolio consists of 48% Tesla, 34% Bitcoin, 8% ETH, 7% Sol, and 3% XRP. If I sell half of the Bitcoin in August 2025 to take profits, I'm worried Bitcoin will not drop the 70% during the following bear market, and I won't be able to buy back in at a lower price. What would you do? NFA. So first of all, Hudson, great question. I like the way you're planning ahead. Very, very important. But some of what I'm about to say may be offensive. <laughs> okay, so first I'm gonna ask you, why do you hold XRP? Um, XRP, as you know, has been around for over eight years. It still has an annual inflation score of 18.3% per year. What does that mean exactly? This is from the Crypto Compendium. Basically, you need 4.8 billion dollars of buying pressure to keep the price the same level based on the number of tokens today and the amount of tokens after a year at 18.3 percent inflation etc that is insane assuming a price of 49 cents which you have today five billion dollars that's nearly as much as the market cap of the top layer ones out there apart from ethereum that's huge okay exactly so why would you hold it well for me i love being a speculator in this market but I hold XRP because its full-scale intended use case utility has not been fully realized. And I'm not leaving until it has been. Full stop. You know, I get it from the idea of a trader that they're not seeing the play. I get all of that. And there's many different kinds of individuals in this market. But I have to say, to overlook the fact of the legal clarity that's just been uh, ruled for XRP, and to overlook the obvious that now that we have that clarity, we'll start making our way into actual full-scale intended use and adoption, is short-sighted to say the least. I'll just leave it there for that. I'm not going to go any deeper even though I could. But the reality here is, is that, you know, it's moments like this that you have to understand that from a trader's point of view, maybe this makes a lot of sense to someone like this gentleman here. But for someone who's here as a long-term investor, this could be a horrible piece of information if you were to get a hold of it. Now let's take a look at this. 
Margaret Rosenfeld, chief legal officer here, says dramatization of the SEC versus judge. If I were the SEC, I would realize judge is giving some strong signals. And this is why Congress needs to act now. Take a listen to this. Um, but now let's just like a dramatic reading of here's a court's court's question to the SEC. This is the court. Is there some significance that I should give or maybe there is none to the fact that the commission, that means the SEC, issued the S-1. The S-1 is the registration statement that Coinbase filed with the SEC when it did its IPO. So to the fact that the commission issued the S-1 and didn't say, hey, watch out, guys, you're engaging in securities laws violations. So she asked that question in that way. These are the exact words. Um, um, and the answer to, from the SEC's legal counsel, the short answer is no. Your honor should take nothing from that. And then the court says, let me have a slightly longer answer. So she's like saying to them, come on, guys. And, and, and then he says, your honor, I'll simply state that because the SEC allows a company to go public does not mean the SEC is blessing the underlying business. He says more, but I'm just being short here. Now, understand that. Now, this is the same thing with Ripple that happened here. Ripple had a partnership with MoneyGram approved by the SEC, knowing that XRP would be used in that business and allowed that deal and that partnership to go forward, then turned around and sued Ripple over XRP. Now, you have to ask yourself, is this a regulatory agency that is leading is this a regulatory agency that is under capture? You know, these are the things that really need to be answered, and it needs to be an independent investigation done by Congress, to be perfectly honest with you. And I believe at the very least, we've seen enough here to know that the SEC should be completely restructured. There's no question. CTO right here, uh, David Schwartz, reacts to the mystery 410 million XRP transfer with the strange 20 XRP gas fee. Let's take a look at this. It closed on me here. It says, uh, he suggests a reason for for the unusual 20 XRP fee associated with mysterious transaction. Surprising, a massive transaction that has sparked considerable curiosity amongst the XRP army due to its unusual details. Development has prompted uh, David Schwartz to offer additional insights here. Specifically, pro XRP crypto enthusiast Saul recently took to X to share his discovery and basically claimed that he had noticed the activation of an XRP address on the 11th of October. However, what raised his curiosity was this astonishing inflow of 410 million XRP, newly created wallet, along with uh, the associated fee in particular. So there is his post right there. And I believe if I have it correct, the CTO weighs in and it says uh, the post also grabbed the interest of David Schwartz and it raised the possibility of an error. He proposed that the sender's intention could have been uh, to establish fee at 20 drops, but possibly due to a miscalculation ended up settling it or setting it at a million times higher. Note that the standard transaction fee is 0 0.00001. XRP translates to 10 drops. Remember, XRP is divisible by 1 million drops. That is remarkable right there. There you can see it right there. So it must have been an error in that regard of that transaction. So now seeing this on the person who did the transaction is what it appears. So look at this right here from the Secretary of State. Shout out to Nerd Nation Unbox right here. Wheezy, you're bad to the bone. The Secretary of State website, when speaking about crypto, the two always mentioned are Bitcoin and Ethereum, except when you're trying to trash the industry, then you mention Ripple. The Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, his father co-founded Warburg Pincus, uh, who is one of two investors in Genesis. How bizarre. And Crypto Cowboy comes in underneath here and says Preston Byrne is also a writer for a Coindesk. Guess who is the CEO of Coindesk? Kevin Worth, an ex Warburg Pincus guy. You know, these, <laughs> these circles are awful puzzling. But here's what it says here from the Secretary of State here. And they've been saying it for quite some time, too, by the way. So don't, don't mistake that. Terrorist financiers and other criminals use a formal uh, financial system, new payment methods such as Bitcoin and Ripple, traditional methods of value transfers such as Hawala. It says here, trade-based money laundering and cash couriers, particularly in countries with non-existent. Look, let's make, make no mistake about it here, right? You know, uh, cash. Cash is the biggest thing being used by criminals for criminal activity.
period, right? And then there's this. There we go. $1.7 trillion U.S. budget deficit shattered in 2023 as the International Monetary Fund issues a warning on America's worrying and deteriorating fiscal trajectory. Uh-huh. Yeah, crash coming Great Depression style with the full fiat reset to U.S. CBDC. The only way they can control the value is going to be a real mess for countries that backed our debt. Hopefully the fam and I played this right and we'll ride it out in Fiji. Yeah, you know what? I hope we play it right too. No doubt about that. But you know what? There's other signals here, just like from the G30, that speaks to a gold standard of interoperability moving to a new system that we can move to. And it sounds an awful lot like what we understand about the XRP ledger in conjunction with RippleNet and the Interledger Protocol. Take a listen to economist Dr. Kenneth Rogoff here, who a lot of people take listen to take a listen to. There are issues for monetary policy. I won't talk about that here, but I have to mention privacy. This is obviously key. How do you regulate privacy? I can't summarize it here. But obviously, this is an absolutely uh, key question. I also have to mention uh, that we need an international platform. The gold standard here is to find something where there's interoperability, there where different central banks and different countries, different players can tap in to a similar system. Now, he goes on to talk about you know, this uh, also being done with the help of the private sector, right? I can't help but feel like when I'm hearing that, I'm hearing him discuss Embridge, which is what we've heard Hyung Sung Shin sing, talk about, right? In the BIS, we don't need to play this. We know exactly what's going on here. There is something coming. They are moving to a new system. And I absolutely believe we're going to see some reminder evidence that we are smack dab in the middle of it. And then we see as the ever-changing world continues to grow and change and take shape, BRICS, China, and India ditched the U.S. dollar for oil, saved $17 billion, they say. BRICS countries, China, and India, Saudi Arabia, and uh, the UAE are benefiting immensely from the U.S. economic sanctions pressed against Russia. You know, this is another reason we need to understand that SWIFT messaging system has played a very key role in pushing these other countries to come together in the BRICS coalition because of the U.S. sanctions through SWIFT, right? This is very, very important here. So keep that in mind as we move forward. But then there's this clip right here. And shout out to, I think it's Black Swan. Is that the guys that did this originally? Gosh darn it, they do a good job. And it, uh, Edo Farina shared this clip here, but I'm sure it's Black Swan Capitalist, if I remember correctly. It's two brothers, and they do a pretty fantastic job. But I want to show you this clip here where they're talking to Lynette Zhang, who is a gold person here. So, you know, we know that uh, Lynette is heavy into gold, but she acknowledges herself as well this reality inside the IMF document where they talk about Three models arise as private settlement assets in marketplace, such as Ripple's XRP, not just Ripple, but Ripple's XRP, right? Stellar's Foundation, and then they go on and talk about Bitcoin and Strike, which is the Lightning Network, which we're still waiting for it to get off the ground there. Trust Bridges and Money Flows. We actually covered this document, and I'll go back up here just to show you the cover of it, because you may remember the cover. Right. There it is. We covered it when it came out, but it was not that long ago. Right. It was just it was this year. We covered it not long ago. I think a month or a couple months ago at best. But nevertheless, I want to play you this clip here where she acknowledges. You know, you think about this for someone who's in the gold world. Andy Sheckman's another one from Miles Franklin. This is why I tell you guys, go tell Andy Sheckman. Click the link underneath my video and go tell Andy Sheckman and everybody at Miles Franklin that you want some gold and silver because we're moving through this transition and you want to have some physical gold and silver in your hands. No question about it. Make sure you use Dig Gold, D-I-G Gold, to get the best prices on it. Tell him Brad Kime sent you. Tell him I said to come on in. Yeah, take a listen to this clip here. In March of 2023, there was a report by the IMF titled Trust Bridges and Money Flows, a digital marketplace to improve cross-border payments. And interestingly, 
on page 23, they mention two digital assets and that's XRP and XLM. The Bank for International Settlements publishes their money flower. And there is a small space in that money flower for those private cryptocurrencies. So I agree with you that the winners of this have already been chosen. I Absolutely, no doubt about it. The winners have already been chosen for me. We're just watching it unfold. That's what it is. And I'll tell you something, as a speculator, as an investor in these hills, and I am a speculator and an investor in these digital hills, and I do believe we're going to find that digital gold, whether it's in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or XRP, or whatever else you choose to put it in. What I really believe is, is that we are on the fate. We are on the pre precipice of seeing all of this change, and that real change is going to come in the way of use case utility, as I mentioned just moments ago. Look, that's going to do it for me. This is the part where I got to turn it off because this is the freedom zone, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're moving to now. And if you haven't seen it from today, you're going to want to join. Don't let censorship take over and separate us. Let's not be a victim. Let's stay together. For the cost of a cup of coffee, we can stay together. You'll get my videos Google ad free. Now think about that. No Google ads, no more. You'll come in here. And on top of that, we're going to open up the kimono and we're going to start talking about things that can actually get you censored. I'm going to let you know more about where I stand, where all of these geopolitical events are going on and things that I think are so massive and implicative for where we are in this space and time. This isn't just about crypto. This is about the world and what we see and how we can take a position and understand it clearly to move forward to protect our investments and our family. So I hope you will join us inside. Click the link for that below. Join the Freedom Zone. We'll see you there. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the next one.